Good morning. It's good to see you all this morning as I adjust my phone. Um, we're back in the book of Acts and I'm kind of on the off hour, but a lot of people just watch it as it comes up on their phone. Um, we're up to where Paul is in Athens and he's going to give his understanding of who God is to the, um, hi Annie, <laughs> to the Athenians. So again, you know, last week we kind of talked about the Athenians were a very intellectual lot. Um, I don't know if you've ever met people who like to talk and talk and talk about ideas, but never really live them out. And so that's part of what Paul is uh, challenging them to do towards the end of this. But also, um, he makes some basic assertions about God. And although we've lived with these ideas all of our life, um, it was probably somewhat new to those who lived in Athens, who lived in um, systems of lots of gods doing different things. But... Uh, Paul is talking to them about who they've given a scrying to of the unknown God. I'm just going to read. So it's chapter 17, verses 24 through 34, and then I'll talk. So this is Paul speaking at a uh, gathering place, and he says, The God who made the world and everything in it. This master of sky and land doesn't live in custom-made shrines or need the human race to run errands for him as if he couldn't take care of himself. He makes the creatures. The creatures don't make him. Starting from scratch, he made the entire human race and made the earth hospitable with plenty of time and space for living so we could seek after God and not just grope around in the dark, but actually find him. He doesn't play hide and seek with us. He's not remote, he's near. We live and move in him, can't get away from him. One of your poets said it well, we're the God created. Well, if we are the God created, it doesn't make a lot of sense to think that we could hire a sculptor and chisel a god out of stone for us, does it? God overlooks as long as you don't know better, but that time has passed. The unknown is now known. He's calling for a radical life change. He has set a day when the entire human race will be judged and everything set right. And he's already appointed the judge, confirming him before everyone by raising him from the dead. At the phrase, raising him from the dead, the listeners split. Some laughed at him and walked off joking. Others said, let's do this again. We wanna hear more. But that was it for the day and Paul left. There were still others, it turned out, who were convinced then and there and stuck with Paul. Among them was Dionysus and Abrigabite and a woman named Damaris. So <laughs> I really cannot read Greek place names. So, um, you know, again, if you thought about somebody asking you who God was, uh, I don't know what you would say. I mean, for me, it always starts with that personal relationship. But for Paul, he's speaking to intellectuals. And so he's also speaking to intellectuals who are used to going and worshiping their gods at shrines and sometimes even um, taking offerings to gods So um, and doing tasks for gods. It was part of their mythology and their understanding of who God was. But here Paul is talking about the God who has made you know, earth and sky and created a habitable world for us and given us the human race. To me, one of the things that isn't helpful um, about when we talk about the Bible is to think of it as a scientific document, which it is not. And um, I know lots of people spend lots of time arguing about science stuff uh, around the Bible, but 
the Bible is a faith story. It's a faith story, and so therefore it is by nature relational. It's about how we feel about God and what we understand in terms of our lives about God. So um, when I believe that God made you know, the heavens and the earth and that God created all that is and created me, it's not as though I expect to be able to track that down scientifically. And Paul, again, that wasn't even in his mind because they're talking philosophies. So all of that is to say that God is the origin. And that I believe. God is the origin of all that is. What that looked like, how that happened, any number of scientists can put any kind of idea with that. But for me, the power and the intellect and the creativeness of God was the beginning. And I'm just going to do my little aside, but it's interesting, you know, 100 years ago or so, scientists and theologians got along very well because they kind of understood this basic idea that it wasn't a scientific document. <laughs> when I was uh, working with Sunday schools, there wasn't, eh, maybe a couple of years would pass, but there wasn't a time that there wasn't a kid who walked up to me and said, Pastor Mary, <laughs> can you show me where there's dinosaurs in the Bible? And I say, nope, I cannot show you where there's dinosaurs in the Bible because it's not a scientific document. It is a faith document. And it talks about our faith story. Um, so that's what Paul is telling is this faith story of God who created everything. And then not only did God create everything, but God stays near to us. God is not far away. And for those in Athens, this was, again, a new idea because their gods were removed from them. And their gods were ones that if they showed up, you were worried because you didn't know what that God was going to do to you. And so here Paul is saying, you know, I know your gods are far away, but our God is near to us and a part of us. And we live and move in that God and that this God is one who is... Um, who has created us. And so we don't create images of God. And again, this is, you know, kind of people take off on this and say you can't make an icon or anything else. You know, if there's an image that you believe represents God for you, I think that's a good thing. You know, for me, it's often, um, I have pictures of the monastery that take me back to who God is. All of that's good, so long as it doesn't become a substitute or the fullness of who God is. The fullness of who God is, is unknowable. That's the idea of what there is to be an infinite God. Infinite, not being able to be contained, and certainly not for a finite human being. So that infinite God has created us, and to believe that we could make an image that contains that is laughable. But for the Athenians, that's what they did. They would create shrines and uh, different statues and different places that they believed that their God resided. So again, Paul is talking to the population where they live and saying, I know this is what you've done in the past for your gods, but this is a God who is... Um, lives and moves with us and with everyone, has created all that is and has created us. And so he keeps on reiterating points at which um, their faith belief has differentiated from our faith belief. And finally, that there will be a time of judgment and that uh, Jesus Christ is that person. We know this because he says he raised from the dead. So um, that judgment... Uh, yeah, I'm okay with that, particularly if it's Jesus and um, who knows me so well. But anyway, so there's a sense that there will be a time of ending of this world. Now, for Paul, he thought that was going to be next week. He writes continually in uh, the letter to the Church of Corinth, to the letter of the Church of uh, Thessalonica, that it's coming really soon. And for Paul, I can imagine that that felt very true because he was this intense human being who was uh, feeling God's presence every day and risking his life to speak about the good news. So for him, he really felt like 
Jesus was going to come and judge and do all of that right then. Um, not so much, but uh, for Paul, that was a real thing. So he, he warns them that this is the time that they uh, need, they have to get on board because they've heard the good news. And so I think that's true as well, not because I think you guys ought to worry about being judged, but because this is the best life that there is to be. <laughs> there isn't anything better. And of course, as I'm talking on my phone, I'm preaching to the choir because <laughs> you guys know all this. But I would encourage you that this is a good way to live, particularly in the midst of all that's going on, particularly in our world today. Um, and so I just want to say uh, one more thing about this is that um, he that some people laugh about the whole raising from the dead. There were mythologies and um, philosophical thoughts about people raising from the dead all the time. Um, that wasn't unique to the story of Jesus. What was unique to the story of Jesus was that he actually did it. He really, really did it. And then people witness that because any culture in which um, things look dead in the winter and come back to life in the spring had this myth, philosophical understanding of um, a human being who could do that as well. So uh, for Paul to say that, yeah, there was an actual human being that did that. It wasn't just a story or a symbol. Uh, they laughed at him. And others said, yeah, 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 let's, let's talk about this more. <laughs> and Paul was like, yeah, I'm done talking. Well, I'm going to get on my way. But there were two particularly who followed. And one was um, Dionysus. And he lived in that area that Paul had gone to speak. Aero, pie guy. Anyway, that's what he was. Which means that he was a philosopher in his own right. He was very intelligent. Um, and... In order to live in that area, he had to be one of the more learned people of the area. And so I think what Luke is doing, although we don't get it as much, is again setting up a um, poles, uh, two opposites, just like he did with Epicureans and Stoics. He's also doing with Dionysus and Damaris. So for the man, of course, he's a man who lives there and is very intelligent and probably very well off. And then a woman named Darmaris, D-A-M-A-R-I-S. Anyway, um, and reading Barclay, uh, that I like to read his commentaries, he said she, <laughs> she was not as well off. And I, again, probably intelligent, but not seen as that. She was probably a woman who worked... Um, and her womanliness at one of the shrines. Get my drift? <laughs> so, probably made her living through basically prostitution. Just saying. So you've got these two, not only male and female, but you know, high end of the um, socioeconomic scale and the low end of the socioeconomic scale. Uh, so those folks came to faith through Paul's preaching. I like that in this text, what the writer wants us to know is that God is for all human beings to live in relationship. That there isn't a bar in which you have to pass, you know, a, a level of um, intellectualness or certainly not money, you know, or anything else. You don't have to be any particular person. You just have to be a human being. And that relationship with God is open to us and near to us and moves in us and through us and so there is no no exclusions with god i like that and so today your assignment <laughs> is to think about who god is do you agree with paul probably we do that god made earth and sky and all that is that god has created us and we are not creating god that um god is near and that that's where we move in God. And that probably um, at some point, there will be a time that we encounter uh, the living Christ and the living God. And my guess is that's going to look like judgment, uh, which 
I'm good. <laughs> Not that I'm good, but if God's judging me, there's a lot of love involved. And if it's anything like me judging my children, I think I'll be okay. Anyway, that's Mary Sunshine, you know? Also, it's nothing I can do anything about, so why worry about it? I just am so grateful and thankful that um, I have God in my life and I have that understanding of myself as a child of God because that's what we all are, is children of God. And God's love and God's care for us is endless, infinite, as I said, for us finite beings. So Paul moves on to the next place. I read it and I've forgotten where it was, but next week we'll move on with Paul uh, as he continues to travel and continues to tell the good news of Jesus Christ. So hopefully we will do the same thing as well in our own little ways, uh, through caring, through kindness, through prayer. Anyway, good to see you guys this morning. Take care. Hey, Marty, I bet you you're cold up north. Take care. Bye. <laughs>